Letter to the Human Race Man, why have you for so long accused the world of being inwardly corrupt and evil? Although certainly the world is ordered most beautifully and caused to move most excellently for you, nevertheless it is corrupt and evil, because you live corruptly in the pure world and wickedly in the good. The first cause of worldly evils for you is too great a hunger for worldly goods. You love the small world more passionately than the great, and you wonder also at this great world which you see, more greatly than the boundless world which you perceive by understanding, in which the great world is contained just as the small world is contained in the great. O mind that belongs to the heavens, you love your earthly shadow, that is, the body, more than the heavenly splendor, your own light, more than the light that is above the heavens. Since in truth love is the beginning of all motion, whether of nature or soul, for this reason, while you love the body ardently, it is on account of the body that you strive after, or fear, all things. And in pursuit of these things, you fill with troubles, and in fearing, you suffer pain. O oh, mind of mind, why do you love so hotly those things which can so easily be put beyond reach before you attain them, and as easily be taken away after you possess them? Alas, fleeing from yourself, why do you follow under such pressure those things which flee from you so swiftly? Wretched mind, why for so long have you vainly tried to keep hold of fleeting, earthly things, as if they were good, those things which have power indeed to keep you far from the good? In fact, these things cannot be held by you in any way. Why do you so rashly believe that you can check your feet in their rapid motion? Why be filled with emptiness? Why grasp for the wind? Have you no wish to fully quench this burning thirst which so torments you? Awake and drink the true water, and not the image of water in dreams. Furthermore, Know that only those things stand out as true which belong to the judge of truth, intelligence. As sense is ignorance of truth, those things which reach towards it, those seemingly to be true, are not. Do you want to get rich quickly? Study to withdraw from the avarice of as much as you have studied to add your possessions up to the present. Live, I beg you, by the law of nature, which is content with very few and very small things, and not according to opinion, which always compels you to be poor. Assuredly, necessity is confined within narrow limits, opinion within none. What is necessary is revealed and provided for us at every step. We labor for what is superfluous. For a man going on a journey, necessity presents useful and suitable provision. Opinion offers useless burden and toil. If you desire rest, do not search for it in movement. Stop the movement. If you desire to rule, rule yourself by reason. If you desire freedom, subject yourself to reason. If you desire to avoid suffering, flee from pleasure, the baits of evils. Spurn pleasure, for, being paid for pain, pleasure inflicts injuries. It is the pleasure of the body, which seems to be the greatest of all pleasures, that most gives rise to pain. The theory and practice of medicine teach that gall is made from nothing more readily than from honey. The sweeter the foods, the more bitter the bile would they create. And that in laughing excessively we often weep, but in weeping we seldom laugh. 
It is not to admonish us that there is more true pain in the senses than pleasure, for pain is experienced more in pleasure than pleasure in pain. If you desire to please yourself, take care to please not the multitude but the wise man, or rather wisdom of necessity. You will displease yourself if you want to please anyone against reason. If you desire to live wisely, remember there is an alteration of good and evil, so that good things ought not to be accepted without apprehension, nor evil things endured without hope. Therefore, we should rejoice in good things with moderation, and sorrow in evil things with even greater moderation. From the past, learn the present. In the present, as far as you are able, look about you at individual things and discern their end. You ought never to launch upon anything which has to be said or done in the present until, as far as possible, you have discerned its future. Nor ought you do or say anything for which you are unable to give a valid account. Finally, when in each action you have committed yourself humbly to God, and done everything in the light of reason and according to the counsel of the wise, live at peace, and whatever follows, accept for the best.